So it's become obvious to anybody that's paying attention that desktop Linux is exploding in popularity, right? I, I've been saying this for a number of years, at least for the last four or five years, I've been telling you guys that I could see this because of the kinds of engagement I get on my Linux related YouTube channel. There's a greater demand for Linux related content. So I knew that our user base was really growing and growing in a big way. And the numbers back it up. The recent stat counter numbers of desktop operating system market share worldwide, we now have about a 4.5% market share as far as Linux on the desktop. And that is about three times the number that we had about 10 years ago. If I go back to 2015, uh, Linux market share was 1.5%, and now we're at 4.5%. So we have essentially tripled our numbers in the last decade. And if we look at these line graphs, you can tell that this blue line, which is Microsoft Windows, it's steadily gone down over the last 10 years, right? Microsoft Windows is losing popularity on the desktop. You can see this purple line or magenta line is Mac OS X. It has steadily gained popularity. So as Windows loses popularity, the big winners are Mac OS and also Linux, which the Linux line is very hard to see. It is the red line, but the red line you can tell is very close to being at the very bottom of this chart all the way back at 2015. You can see the red line is essentially near zero and obviously we're not quite as close to the bottom of the chart as we move forward to today. So as we see this explosion in popularity in Linux, and it really is an explosion because if you triple your user base in 10 years, I mean, that is just an outrageous gain, right? And naturally the question arises, what is going to change with Linux? As Linux becomes more and more popular, how is that going to change Linux, the operating system, and Linux, the community? And this is the kind of question that that we've been asking for 30 years, it was always a hypothetical question. You know, I remember when I first switched to Linux, you know, 15, 20 years ago, people would ask, what would happen if Linux became more popular than Windows? What would happen if Linux became so popular it was the dominant desktop operating system? And we would have these hypothetical kind of conversations. But back in our mind, deep in the back of our minds, we knew, well, that's never going to happen. But here recently, because we've been seeing this surge in popularity in Linux, now I think we need to start asking ourselves that question question and actually answering it in a serious way. I think easily the two things that will change going forward as Linux becomes more popular are the two areas that pretty much everybody complains about when they switch to Linux, and that is software availability and hardware compatibility. Like those two things are really have always been kind of the barrier to entry. They are what really prevents a lot of people from making the switch over from Windows to Linux. It's, it doesn't have the software that they require for school or work, and it doesn't support some of their hardware, especially some of their peripheral devices. In terms of software, two of the biggest barrier to entries are the Microsoft Office Suite and the Adobe Creative Suite. So uh, these have always been an issue, and in the case of Adobe, Adobe has said they have absolutely Absolutely no plans to ever support Linux. But you know what? As our numbers grow, they will change their minds because Adobe, of course, is a for profit company. Obviously, Microsoft is a for profit company as well. And if we have enough numbers, if there's enough Linux users on the desktop to make it worth it for these companies to port over Microsoft Office over to Linux or port over Adobe Photoshop, for example, over to Linux, if there's enough of us willing to purchase that software, then it becomes financially viable for these companies to actually port those applications over to Linux. And I think, you know what, we're, we're getting close. Four and a half percent is probably not enough. But if we get into that like 10% number, if we become very similar to what Mac OS was really just a few years, uh, you know, Mac OS is always kind of languished in that 10% number, right? If we can get to that point, well, obviously Microsoft makes software for Mac OS. Obviously Adobe makes software for Mac OS. We really don't need to become more popular than Windows. Really, I think we just need to become as popular as Mac OS. And as far as hardware compatibility, I can make the case that Linux supports more hardware than any other operating system on the planet. Obviously Linux, the kernel, 
is the heart of all of our GNU slash operating systems that most of us run on our desktops, our laptops, obviously all the mobile operating systems such as Android and Chrome OS, you know, those obviously are Linux based mobile operating systems. There is so much device support for Linux. It's not even funny, but where we lack, especially on a, a traditional desktop PC is a lot of peripheral devices, especially those gaming related, because if you're a hardcore gamer, you've got all your RGB keyboards and RGB mice and your fancy gaming chairs, and you got these laser light shows going on on different pieces of hardware uh, on your, your desktop. And you know, none of that stuff works on Linux typically because there's drivers required for a lot of that stuff to work. And the companies that make those peripheral devices, typically they don't write drivers for Linux. They write drivers specifically for Windows, typically that stuff only works on Windows. Now, will that improve as we gain market share? Possibly. You know, I, I do think that Steam on Linux is also because now that Linux is being seen as a legitimate gaming platform, I think we're going to see a lot of those peripheral devices that forever have never worked on Linux, I think we're going to start seeing a little bit of traction in that area. I also think we're going to start seeing Linux being more of a player in terms of just the enterprise market share. Now, obviously, we're talking about desktop market share, not server market share. Obviously, Linux dominates the server world, right? But because it is now seen as a legitimate desktop operating system, I think you're going to see more businesses actually installing Linux on just regular PCs, workstations, uh, company laptops, things like that. Now that you have, especially you have legitimate enterprise grade Linux distributions with real corporations backing them, such as Ubuntu and SUSE and Red Hat, uh, which they're already making boatloads of money in the enterprise space anyway. Those three companies, I think we're only going to see that grow going forward. And large part because as we grow on the desktop, you know, it's really going to improve Linux in pretty much all areas of the market share. I think one of the most important consequences of Linux gaining more popularity is that more and more people are going to be exposed to the free software movement and the open source movement. More and more people are going to hear about the philosophy of free and open source software. They're going to hear that message of starting to focus more on being more privacy oriented and security oriented. We're going to demand more of having our digital rights respected. Now that may sound like a bit of a pipe dream from me, a free software enthusiast, but I've already been witnessing this. When I said I've been seeing that Linux is gaining popularity over the last few years, it's not a coincidence that Free software and open source software have also seen a surge in popularity. All of a sudden, you saw companies that hated open source software, that they despised the term open source, and they just wanted to kill the whole open source movement. Companies like Microsoft, for example, and Google, and Meta, and Apple, you know, they're all talking about open source software now. They've all embraced the idea of open source software now. And why is that? Well, in large part, it's because they have seen the success of Linux, right? Linux is not going away. In fact, they see Linux gaining popularity. They see the numbers just like you and me, and, and they know that the open source model, you know, they can't stop it. Now they have decided to embrace it. And you really, once we get more of the big proprietary software companies embracing free and open source software and you know, standard free licensing and things like that, again, it's going to have a huge cultural impact, not just cultural impact as far as what the people think. It's also going to affect laws, legislation. People are going to start voting based on whether certain companies respect our digital rights. So I just named several areas where I think, you know, that Linux becoming more popular is a good thing. But I also see Linux gaining popularity also being a negative in some aspects, because I do think as Linux becomes more and more popular, we're going to face some some situations, you know, some some pain points that we haven't faced yet. For example, obviously, you've got to talk about security on Linux. Linux has always been thought as being a secure operating system, certainly much more secure than other desktop operating systems like Microsoft Windows. And in large part, we were secure because we were obscure, right? We had security through obscurity. There weren't enough Linux users on the desktop. You know, we were such a small number, it wasn't worth it for the hackers 
to target us. But as Linux has gained popularity, we're starting to see many more security exploits out in the wild, especially targeting desktop Linux, as also with mobile Linux operating systems as well. I also see a problem in that there is a large part of the free and open source software community that really hates our fractured nature. The fact that we all work on our own little projects and that we can't agree on anything and that we love to just constantly fork software, right? And will that get worse as we get more popular? Obviously, that will be the case because more and more people will come into free and open source software and they will see that, hey, I have all of this freedom with this software. I can I can freely do what I want with any of this free software. I can modify it. I can fork it. I can rename it, rebrand it to whatever, you know, me and this other guy can take this other popular piece of software and we can go our own direction and completely change it. And then if people don't like what we're doing, they're free to fork our version of that software into something else. And yeah, we're going to have much more diversity as far as software we're going to have much more fragmentation for those that think we already have too many distros we're going to have a million more distros as we become more and more popular for those of that think we have too many desktop environments we're going to have many more desktop environments going forward again as more and more people come into linux now is that necessarily a bad thing me personally i have never saw that as a bad thing i think that's part of having freedom you can't complain about being given freedom and then complain about people exercising exercising their freedom by doing what they want to do with the software. I understand some people really hate that there are so many distros. There's so much software choice in Linux, like it's overwhelming. I get I get why some people feel that way, and it will that that will always be the case with Linux and free and open source software. And as we gain in popularity, I do see this, you know, becoming much more exaggerated than it is right now. And one final negative I want to mention is, you know, as Linux becomes more popular, you know, I think we're going to see an increase in the toxic nature of the Linux community and the free and open source software community. There already exists a large number of hateful people in our community that are driven by really just negativity, anger. They want to infiltrate certain free and open source software projects and then stir up a lot of drama. There are a lot of people within our communities that their only reason for being a part of the community is they want to burn it down. I know that sounds crazy, but there are a lot of really broken and damaged people out in the world. And unfortunately, there's a lot of those broken people inside the free and open source community. And I think as we gain popularity, obviously, we're going to see the numbers of these kinds of broken and damaged people, these this toxicity that that comes into our communities, I think is going to grow. But the, my only hope is that the companies that also start adopting free and open source software, you know, we start seeing, you know, major billion dollar and trillion dollar companies coming on board for free and open source software and supporting specifically desktop Linux. Hopefully these companies that have real skin in the game, because they're not interested in drama, they're not interested in politics, they're only interested in money. They just want to make money and hopefully you know, I, I hate to depend on large corporations because I'm kind of anti-corporate when it comes to free and open source software, but I do think in some ways it would be good to have large corporations have be more of a part of free and open source software because they would have the power to drive out some of the really nasty and toxic elements out of our community because right now it's starting to get a little bit out of control. So I, I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, but I, I hopefully as we gain in popularity, we eliminate some of the drama queens out of our community. So there you have it, just some of my thoughts on what could happen if desktop Linux saw serious mass adoption. You know, I, I gave my thoughts, and obviously it's all guesswork. Who knows what things will happen in the future? But if you wanna share your thoughts in the comments down below, please post some of the pros and cons that you see with Linux gaining in popularity. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daylist, GDR, George, Lee, Matt, 
Matthew, Methos, Urian, Paul, Peace, Archivador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tianrin, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.